Hi, I'm Missy Yost with Yost Group and welcome to Yost on the Coast. If you're not familiar with Yost on the Coast, we do these videos about once a week to keep you in the know of what's going on in the low country of South Carolina. Make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the little bell and share our videos so that other people can find us as well. Today, we are going to go behind the scenes at Latitude Margaritaville Hilton Head while Jim Head, one of their superintendents, uh, takes us through a how we build meeting. Now we have only hit the highlights in this meeting, but I think it's gonna give you a great way to see how Mentos builds their home, what sets them apart from other builders, and give you an idea of what to expect when you build a home with Mentos. We have said over and over again, we feel that they are one of the best production builders in the area. They don't cut corners, they care about their clients, and we are always very impressed with what they do. So. Come with me and let's see how we build. We do use two by sixes on exterior walls. Okay. Um, gives you better insulation back. Right. Inside your walls, you're gonna have bat insulation, which is similar when I say bat insulation. It's like the, what most people are used to, the fiberglass looking type insulation. Right, the pink It may stuff. not be fiberglass, as a matter of fact, they're using a different type of product. Um, that's not fiberglass, so it's not so itchy. Okay. Um, which doesn't matter because it's hidden and encased in the walls. But, right. Uh, but it is a fiberglass, they call it bat insulation. Okay. In the ceilings, you'll have, after the sheetrock is installed, we do blown insulation. Right. And if you've got the upgraded insulation package, which I believe you do in here. She, she um, does. You'll have thicker insulation in the attic. Uh, than what we normally do. In other words, more okay. than what's required by code. Okay, and you can see, uh, maybe or maybe not here, uh, just because we don't have a whole lot of light, these uh, have the foam in between every one of them so that you, it's airtight. Right, we want to try, try to make it as tight as we can. Mm -hmm. I'll mention this, we have a thing called a, a um, blower door test. Mm -hmm. When the house is completely finished, just before we close, as a matter of fact, for us to get a certificate of occupancy, we have to do what's called a blower door test. They close up everything in the house, they go to the front door and they have a, a thing that covers the front door with a fan built into the bottom. Mm -hmm. That machine will pull air out of the house. They'll turn it on and it'll pull air out of the house and it will measure how much air is being drawn through the house. That tells you how tight and how good the insulation is. If we don't meet certain guidelines, you know, that certain threshold number, then we have to go back and reseal and check everything to make sure it's good to go. But we do things like this to make sure that we're always going to get right. a good number when we do our fresh our fresh air intake. Yeah, you guys do a great job with yeah. that. Yeah, you'll also notice while we're talking about this, down at the bottom, yep. your sill plate, the white here, is caulked. Um, that also helps to, again, it's mainly for air. I know a lot of people say, well, and the bugs won't get in. That's true, <laughs> it does help to keep the bugs out, but bugs can find a way in. It's not really a bug seal, it's mainly for the air seal. And you see it's also foamed here as well. Right. Um, so you'll see that throughout the house as well. And that is, again, part of your energy efficiency system to help make sure that you're gonna get a good, a good score when we do the blower door test. Okay. You'll notice yep. in the ceiling, um, this is part of our uh, the way we build with our heating and air or our energy efficiency package. Okay. That silver coating is a radiant heat barrier to help stop some of the heat from coming into the house and into the attic. You'll notice as you're scanning over here, come this way with your camera. You'll notice on this wall, which happens to be your firewall. Mm -hmm. Firewall is the wall that separates your unit from the house next door. If you look up. At the ceiling again, you'll see that we do not have that silver backing here right. because that plywood is special. It's fire rated plywood and that does not come with the with the silver backing. While we're looking at this wall, which I didn't mention the garage, yes, this I'll quickly good. go over this. So this is your party, what I call party wall, a separating wall between this and the unit next door. Um, it's been designed very cleverly so that your master bedroom is backed up to somebody else's master bedroom, not their television, on, you know, mm -hmm. in their living room. So that helps with sound, but this is what you have. You're gonna have sheetrock here, you'll have insulation here, you have an airspace here, two layers of half inch sheetrock, another airspace, and then everything is double. Mm -hmm. So on the other side, rock, airspace, insulation, and sheetrock. Right. So this is about a foot thick or so, a little mm -hmm. bit more than a foot thick um, here, insulated on this side and insulated on the other side. It's not required by code, but that's done for, um, for um, 
uh, sound deadening yeah. purposes. Um, so that makes it very nice. So that's your firewall. Yeah. It's called a firewall because that's what it does. If a fire yeah. were to catch in the unit next door, it's called a two hour rated firewall. You've got approximately two hours before the fire will even affect this side okay. of the property. And again, back to that plywood up above, that's why you have yeah. fire rated plywood um, first four or five feet off of this wall. Okay. We get a lot of questions about these cables. Yep. These are just tie down cables uh, that are uh, hurricane um, code. Um, you'll see these cables throughout the house. Some of them are a little bit thicker than others. These are a little thicker in the corners. Um, they're required to just make sure that everything stays tight. And make sure that if the wind wind blows real hard and it won't, well, the whole house won't come up. Correct. It's all yep. under a hurricane code enforcement right you also notice we've got anchor bolts down here at the bottom and you'll see those in several spots throughout the house um, those are for the same thing all anchor bolts to help the help the hold hold the house from shifting off the foundation if we ever had hurricane force hurricane force type things. okay this tube <clears throat> we call it a smurf tube only because it's blue um, but this is um, when you have your telecommunications, your coaxial um, uh, um, computer lines or computer internet, or if you decide to get a telephone line, the whatever service you decide to choose, whether it's Comcast or what have you, they will run their lines and push their lines up through this conduit from the outside. Okay. When they come up here, they'll fish them through, they'll come out of here and into here, and this line will go up and over. This blue line will head on over here. And let's walk this way so I yep. can show you that. That goes in the laundry room, doesn't it? Yeah. And the other end of that blue line is right here. You see the blue? Mm -hmm. So this comes to this box. So they fish the line, your cable line through here. And this is what we call the AV box, the audio visual box. And here you can mount um, whatever equipment you want to put in here. Sometimes people, uh, some Comcast, uh, companies or in cable companies will mount their uh, modem in here mm -hmm. um, you'll notice there's also a wire yeah. coming in through here when we finish there'll be an outlet an actual electrical outlet right here and there'll be a plug so that if you mount equipment here you'll have a plug very accessible so you can plug things in and that's what this wire will be connected to as well this is going to be power for that outlet perfect the rest of these cables while we're standing right here go from here on up to the different locations in your bedroom for uh, coaxial cables and what we call Cat 5, which is, um, or Cat 6, which are lines for uh, telephone or other uh, other services such right. as that. Right, that's where they're plugged right into the TV if they, or uh, Wi-Fi or Correct. whatever. Yeah. Yes. It yes. won't even be Wi-Fi, it'll be a direct connect back. All right, in here you'll notice in the in the bedrooms we have a return air. Yeah, now this is the second bedroom we're in. Right, second bedroom we're in. This is a return air and this is your supply air over here. So cold and hot air is gonna come out of, come out of this one and then it's pulled right back on through here just like you normally in most houses have just one large uh, intake. Yeah. This one has, uh, in each of the bedrooms, we have extra ones so you get better airflow. That's good. So that's another thing we do to try to get better circulation and better energy efficiency. Yeah. Now you will not need to put a filter in this. Okay. Okay, none of the intakes, you will need a filter because it's located in the heating and air conditioning closet in the actual unit, which I'll show you in just a minute where that closet is. So I only have one filter, it's in the unit. You don't ever have to get up on a ladder to okay. change it and do not put filters in here. It's actually required, or it's actually designed not to have filters in here. <laughs> your air conditioner unit, you'll notice it's, it's set down low. It's a great dust and dirt collector right now, but mm -hmm. that will be taken care of. Your actual unit will sit here, and the filter for all of your air conditioning system will be in this box. It will just slide out like a drawer. And you can just slide it in and slide it out. Very convenient. Okay, that's where the filter goes. Correct. Yeah. That's the only filter There's you need. No filter anywhere else. You have a drain right here. This is your condensation line. So you don't have to worry about a drip somewhere outside the house somewhere. It'll drip directly into the sewer system. Oh, okay. And that's what this is for. That'll be cut down a little further. And they'll have a line that goes into there. 
Okay. Perfect. Here is, you have two pipes. One is a fresh air intake. The other one is just an exhaust for um, carbon monoxide because it's a gas unit. Right. I have an exhaust. One of these pipes just goes up into the attic for the fresh air intake. This is where all of your, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, pest control. Yeah. Pest control. You notice these are blue lines. Yep. The blue lines are just carrying the the the, uh, the product from here to the rest of the areas in the house. When it gets to where we want it to disperse, it switches over to a green line. The green lines are the ones that are perforated. You know, right. The blue perforated. ones are not perforated. The green ones are correct. Yeah. So at this point right here, right behind here, is the port that the uh, the uh, pest control company, whatever that is, they'll plug into a uh, they'll plug right into the hose here and it'll it'll pump the chemical through the house. Okay. Um, you may notice also the different color on the floor. I get questions about this and uh, what do we do about getting the floor smooth um, prior to putting the flooring down and you can see it's already been done here. We get a guy that comes in with a 10 foot straight edge and we go all around the concrete to see if there's any high spots. Mm -hmm. If they're high spots, they're spray painted marked and then another guy comes back and grinds that concrete down. And that's what you're seeing, some of these whiter spots here and over here. That's been ground down so that when we put the flooring in, we're not going to have too much of this up and down. Okay. Again, never perfect, but we want to keep it within those tolerances of, right. of good construction. Okay. Okay. After the insulation inspection, we'll install drywall. It takes a couple of weeks for the drywall, at least two weeks for the drywall to be finished and then primed, two to three weeks, two, two and a half weeks. After that, we'll start putting in tile in your bathrooms. Right after the drywall is finished, we'll have tile in the bathrooms. That's the shower and the floors. Um, we'll install cabinets right away after that. And then we'll be doing things like um, finishing, putting in the switches and, and, switches and plugs. Right. We'll uh, put flooring in, and after the rest of the flooring goes in, we'll put in your plumbing fixtures. So a lot of stuff happens. Your yep. interior trim will go in, the, the paint will be done. Um, um, so a lot of stuff happens there. Right. The next time we'll actually meet in person or by, by yeah. phone will be at uh, about 10 days prior to closing, 10 to 14 days. We call it the new home celebration. Mm -hmm. We'll go through the house and check on everything. It'll be about 90 99% done. Right. Um, I have a little form there we'll fill out. If anything's not done, we'll write it down so that when we meet again at the day of closing, we'll go over that to make sure where we are on everything. Okay, sounds, sounds perfect. If something, and if something is not done, It'll be noted on there, and it should be something like a scratch door that we have to wait for right. to be ordered to come back in. Right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the How We Build meeting at Latitude Margaritaville Hilton Head. Once again, I am Miss Eos with Eos Group. We are brokered by EXP Realty. If you have any questions at all about this video or any of the videos we do, please drop them below. We will answer your question so that everybody can see the answer. If you would like to reach us via email, text, phone call, however, we're happy for you to reach out to us that way as well. And until next time, bye-bye.